Hello and welcome. So here I have an iPod Classic 6th generation. And if you're into iPod modding, you may have heard that the iPod Classic 6th generations can only take a maximum of 128 gigabytes when upgraded with an iFlash or an MSATA SSD or something like that. And that was true up until four months ago where this guy by the name of All Soro has uploaded a guide on GitHub about how to get around that limitation. And um, yeah, the way we get around it is basically just by flashing the seventh gen firmware onto the sixth gen logic board. And yeah, as you can see, it's now showing up with the full 233 gigabytes. Well, it's a 256 gigabyte SD card that I put in here, but yeah, showing up as 233 gigabytes as it should. And if we go to the um, settings page, as you can see, we're running version 2.0.2 for the software when previously, I think this one was on 1.1.2 or 2.0.1. Those are the two versions that come on the 6th gen by default. And as you can see, the model number now starts with MC as well. Whereas the 6th gens usually have a model number starting with MB or BP. Then the 7th gens have a model number starting with PC or MC. Uh, so yeah. The seventh gens that look identical to the sixth gen that I've got here, um, they don't have this limitation. So if you were to put up one terabyte or 512 gigabytes or 256 gigabytes in a seventh gen, it would just work straight out of the box. Uh, but yeah, on the sixth gens, that's not the case. So yeah, in this tutorial, I will be going through the guide by Olsoro, which I'll have a link to that in the description as well if you want to have a read up on that but yeah i'll be going through step by step and showing you the full process of how to flash the seventh gen firmware onto the sixth gen and bypass that 128 gigabyte limit so yeah i have another sixth gen ipod classic here which i haven't actually tested yet but we'll put an iflash quad in it we'll put 256 gigs of storage and a 3000 million power battery um, and after i do that i'll just test it and make sure it all works and then once I confirm it's working, we'll get started and I'll show you the full process. And I might just put this in as a time lapse as well, because I have plenty of guides showing how to flash mod these iPods. So if you're interested in that, you can check out one of my other guides. Or if you don't want to flash mod your iPod yourself, you could actually just book a mail-in repair on my website and I can do the whole thing for you. So I'll have links to book that in the description as well. Oh yeah, another way to easily tell the difference between a 6th and a 7th gen is just by looking at the storage capacity text on the back here. This one's a 6th gen and it's a big 128 gigabyte logo there. And then this one's off the 7th gen. And as you can see, it's a much smaller text and it says 160 gigabytes. Yeah, so the 6th the gens, they came in 80 gigabytes, 120 gigabytes, and then a thicker 160 gigabyte version. And the seventh gens, they came in 160 and 120 gigabytes. And yeah, so seventh gen has the smaller text like that, and sixth gen has the larger text like that. That's probably the easiest way to tell, especially if your iPod's not actually powering up. But it can be good to look in the menu as well because these things can have parts switched around and stuff like that. So especially if you're buying something used off of eBay, you never know what you're going to get, to be honest. Alright, and there we have our second iPod flash modded and restored. Don't mind the dead pixels. And as you can see, it's showing up as 127 gigabytes. So let's get started. All right, so here is the guide on how to do this, and I'll have a link to this down in the description as well. And yeah, I'd recommend reading through this guide at least once, just so you know the full process. And I'd also recommend watching this tutorial at least once through as well, before you actually go and try it. Yeah, just so you're actually aware of the full process and what you're gonna be doing. Yeah, and there's also, it's got the advantages and disadvantages and stuff like that here. Yeah, and the guy also states that 2.0.2 uh, .2 is probably the most stable version as well. You could put on 2.0.4 or 2.0.3 or something like that. But again, he says it's slightly less stable. So 2.0.2 .2 seems to be the best version. And once you've had a read through that, just come down here to where it says download and install required files. And now we can just download all these. So we've got the iPod 2.0.2 .2 .2 firmware. Let's download that first. It looks like I've already downloaded it. Uh, next, we'll need an older version of iTunes. So he recommends version 12.10.11.2 and he's got a download link for that here as well. So if you have a newer version of iTunes or you don't even have iTunes at all, I'd come and download this one here. Um, I've already installed that though. 
so I won't go through the process of installing that again, but yeah. If you are uninstalling a version of iTunes and reinstalling this, this new one here, you're going to want to make sure you uninstall every single component because otherwise it may cause issues. So just open the, the Windows uninstaller thingy and there's like five different things you have to uninstall to completely remove iTunes from your computer. All right. Next, you're going to need to download Rockbox, which I already have downloaded as well. But if you don't have Rockbox, just click this link. And this tutorial requires the Rockbox software just to modify some of the files. You don't actually have to have Rockbox installed for this to work. So Rockbox is used for the installation process, but it's not actually... You won't have Rockbox installed on the final build if you don't want to. You could if you wanted, but it's not like a required thing. And then you're going to have to download this guy's Rockbox uh, firmware sort of thingy that he's got here. So download this. Save. I think there's one more thing as well. Yeah, this iPod sysconfig editor tool. So just download that as well. All right, so now that we have everything downloaded, we can actually get started on this. First thing what we want to do is go to the folder where we've downloaded everything. And I'll create a new folder and just put all these files. All right, so step one, what we have to do is we have to flash the Rockbox bootloader onto our iPod Classic. So first things first, plug the iPod into your PC. Open up the Rockbox. If you've just flash modded your iPod as well, obviously you're going to have to load the software through iTunes first before you start anything else, but I assume you've probably already done that. Next what we can do, let's just make sure we've selected our iPod here. And yeah, we just need to install the bootloader first, so just tick this bootloader checkbox and don't check anything else, and then just click install. And since this is a 6th gen, this will require us to enter into... DFU mode during this res restoration process here. So to do that, when it says this on the screen, what you want to do is just hold down these two buttons, the menu and center buttons, and just keep holding them until the iPod restarts and just continue holding them. And then you'll hear the USB sound again eventually and the screen will be completely blank and it'll continue with the um, process of loading Rockbox on. All right, now we're on this screen where it's attempted to boot into Rockbox, but it hasn't successfully been able to do that because Rockbox isn't actually installed. Um, we can now just click abort on the uh, process here where it says restarting iPod waiting for remount. And step number two is install my custom Rockbox build. So we can do that by going to the file we downloaded. It is just this one here. So extract this and we get this folder called .rockbox. And what we want to do is just copy that dot rockbox into the root directory of our iPod here. All right. And once we've copied that dot rockbox folder in, we can go ahead and restart our iPod again. We can unplug it now as well. And after this reboots, it should boot straight up into rockbox. Um, all right. And the next step is to dump our system config file. So what we want to do here is go to system, debug keep out. We want to select the view and save sysconfig from NOR to file. I think it's, it's the third last one. So just click on that. And it should say sysconfig file has been saved. And now plug our iPod back up into the computer here. And you may notice now that this may not actually appear in File Explorer, to be honest, just because this these six gens don't always play well in Windows File Explorer when you got Rockbox installed. So you may have to boot your iPod back up into disk mode to get it to come up on your computer. So just hold the menu and center buttons until the iPod restarts. You'll see the Apple logo and you hold um, the center and the play pause button and then it'll just come up on your computer. So click on iPod and as you can see now, there's a new file called sysconfig or S-Y-S-C-F-G. So what you want to do now, let's just copy this file and well, we'll actually cut it and we'll go into our, where's our other file here? Just put it in the folder that's got all our other software that we need. So just come in here and paste it. 
All right, now our next step is to extract this sysconfig editor program. And now we can open this. Click OK, iPod Classic sysconfig editor. So what we want to do now is we want to select that file that we just got. So we come up here to open. And now we find that file. It was in our downloads, LBA28 sysconfig. And it'll load up all the information, tell you the serial, firmware ID, software version, all this type of stuff. And now come down here to where it says apply edit preset and just click on this one. The one that says recommended to turn 2.0.2 2.0.4 compatible iPod. Then click OK. And now go to File, Save. And then click OK. And that should have saved our sysconfig file. Basically, it should have just updated it. So, as you can see, it says date modified. 244 and it's 244 right now that's how we know that it's worked if, if the time it says there is like 10 minutes ago then it's probably hasn't been updated yet it's probably just the same file that you copied off your ipod in the first place but anyways now let's go um control c control v paste it back into the ipod all right now let's boot back up into rockbox and we can load this file on so we can unplug our ipod now hold the menu and center buttons to restart our ipod here and it should boot straight back up into Rockbox. So scroll back down the system, debug, keep out, and then we click, yeah, the very bottom one, flash sysconfig from file to NOR. So just click on that, and it should come up with this message here. Sysconfig file has been flashed to NOR in two attempts. And that's what the guide says it should say as well. All right, now we just have to restore our iPod from within iTunes. So let's go back into disk mode now. We'll just click back. It's holding your center and menu buttons until the iPod restarts. Let's go back into disk mode here. All right, now we just got to restore the firmware through iTunes. And after we plug it in, the next thing we want to do is put our iPod into DFU mode again. So if you remember how to do that, just hold the menu and center buttons. Just keep holding them, don't let go. And eventually you'll hear the USB sound again. And now in iTunes, you'll see here, it says iTunes needs to prepare your iPod for recovery. Please leave your iPod connected, click continue. And it will say preparing iPod for recovery. Just wait till it finishes loading. Looks like it's come up again. I'd have to restart iTunes. Sometimes if you plug too many iPods into the computer, iTunes just gets a bit confused and just stops detecting iPods altogether. So when that happens, you wanna just end all the processes from within um, Task Manager. You can just open it up again and it should work this time. Actually, the iPod's rebooted. Yeah, here we go. Now it says iTunes has detected an iPod in recovery mode. You must restore this iPod before it can be used with iTunes. And as you can see, it says here software version 2.0.4. So it has detected this as a um, seventh gen. So click OK, but don't click restore. What you want to do is click shift and click restore. And that'll open up our um, file explorer here where we can select our firmware. So just come over here to wherever you, you've saved your 2.0.2 .2 firmware and then double click on it. And now we'll load in our 2.0.2. .2. Again, you could go for 2.0.4, but the guy seems to think it's a bit less stable. So I'll take him at his word and go with 2.0.2. .2. And then it'll just restore as normal, hopefully. Now it should restart. We should get that sort of loading bar as it loads the firmware files. Yeah, and this process here will also remove the Rockbox bootloader as well. So we won't have Rockbox on this iPod anymore after this firmware gets installed. All right, there we go. Our iPod is now finished restoring. 
And as you can see, it's now come up in Windows. And if we go on this PC, you can see the iPod now appears as 234 gigabytes from within Windows File Explorer. There we go, welcoming a new iPod. Now we can click continue, get started. And there we go, 234.08 gigabytes. And as you can see, software version 2.0.2. And every time you plug it in, it might prompt you to update it to 2.0.4 or whatever. Just click no. I'm pretty sure if we go ahead and reset this through iTunes now as well, it'll just reset as normal. And we'll just always be detected as a 7th gen from now on. So I've now disconnected the iPod from the computer. Now if we go down the settings, you see 233 gigabytes free. And if we click through to the menu, can now see we're on version 2.0.2 .2 and our model number starts with an MC. And now we have successfully installed 256 gigabytes in an iPod Classic 6th gen and got it to show up. And so you could technically go up to two terabytes in this iPod now. However, I'd probably recommend maybe one terabyte max. One terabyte seems to just be a more practical sort of limit for these. But uh, yeah, I hope you were able to bypass the 128 gigabyte limit on your iPod Classic 6th gen. So I haven't actually tested this myself personally as of yet. I've just found out how to do this today. So um, yes, yeah, so I'll be using these iPods over the course of the next couple of weeks and I'll see if there's any bugs or anything that I find. But um, it looks like it's all good. Obviously this hasn't been officially tested by Apple or anything like that. We're taking the firmware that was designed for the 7th gen logic boards and we're just flashing it onto the 6th gen boards. Like, although they are pretty similar iPods, there may actually be hardware differences between them. So, there may be issues with doing this, but the guy seems to think that on the 2.0.2 .2 version, they seem pretty stable. Uh, yeah, so I'll be testing these over the next few weeks, and if I find any bugs, I will update in the comments section below. But yeah, I think this is a good little trick, because there are a lot more 6th gens out there than 7th gens, I'm pretty sure. Or at least the seventh gens are a lot more sought after, that's for sure. The seventh gens have been selling for a little bit more on the used market as well, just because of that 128 gigabyte limit. But since this trick works now, it makes the sixth gens a lot more viable. And really, if there, if there isn't any bugs, well, there's almost no point in going for a seventh gen over a sixth gen then, if this is the case. But uh, yeah, the only other feature that the seventh gens still have that the sixth gens don't is just the uh, playback controls through the headphone jack. So you've got the headphones that have these in them, the little buttons. Uh, that feature still won't work on the 6th gens because that also required some extra hardware as well, not just a firmware update. So yeah, but if you like this video, give it a like, subscribe to the channel, check out my other videos. I've got plenty of different iPod related videos showing you how to upgrade them and mod them and make them look much better condition than this. These are just some old ones I had lying around. And yeah, I've got a Rockbox tutorial if you want to find out how to install Rockbox. I've got Bluetooth mod tutorials if you want to put Bluetooth in your iPod. I also sell a Bluetooth upgrade kit. If you want to just pop the back off of your iPod and slap a new one on, you'll have Bluetooth. So that's a pretty cool mod you could do. I've got a step-by-step -step guide showing you how to solder that thing in as well. If you wanted to do it yourself, check out my website. I have a mail-in repair service for all these iPods where I could install all these mods for you. And I also sell refurbished models as well, along with all the different parts. So yeah, um, plenty of different iPod related content. But anyways, so yeah, thanks for watching this video. Hope to see you next time and bye.